This vlog is about one of the most disturbing nights of my life in a place that seemed like paradise. In April, in the middle of my extended stay on Socotra, my local friends proposed that we take a trip to a neighboring island called Tarsa. It took us several hours on a small fishing boat to reach this extremely remote place. It must be one of the wildest and most pristine islands in the world. Oh my god, it's so big! Welcome to Darza. We've just arrived by boat to this ultra remote and uninhabited island. Well, uninhabited, yes, that means nobody lives here apart from thousands upon thousands of rats. Step number one, unload the entire boat. We found a little cave here right on the beach, which should be pretty good for a shelter. This place is almost perfect. There is only one catch. What did you find, Abdullah? Uh, so the trace of the rats. This is rat footprints? Yeah. <gasps> oh my god. How many rats do you think there are on the island? Maybe thousands. <laughs> We just found our first traces of the rat presence on the island. Let's see how the day progresses. solo hike here across the plateau of the island and honestly it feels so strange so weird to know that I'm walking around on an uninhabited island an island where nobody lives and nobody really has ever lived such a wild place by the way I'm still looking for those rats I haven't found a single one yet I think I might be onto something here. This big rock has a bunch of small holes inside it and a lot of dried out grass and plants on top. It looks like the perfect little hiding spot for a family of rats. Well, even if they are there, I don't want to disturb them because I have a sneaking suspicion that at some point tonight, the rats will come and visit us at our campsite. In the meantime, I lost myself in the island's untouched nature. It's not often that you find yourself alone on the outer edge of one of the world's least accessible archipelagos. Of course, in a place like this, there are no shops, nothing, so you have to catch your own dinner, which is exactly what we're about to do here with Rob. <laughs> what are we catching today? Anything with bites. We've got the fishing rods ready, we've got the boat ready. Yalla, let's go. fishing spot and this woo, is the bait hopefully we'll catch ourselves a nice little dinner fresh from the sea well it wasn't as easy as we'd hoped every time Rob cast his bait it would come back empty all of a sudden dinner began to seem out of reach Let's go on board and see what's going on over there. <laughs> Some books like this one are vital to the local economy. 
They usually come here from mainland Yemen, buy fish like tuna from the islanders and eventually resell the fish on the mainland. There is a chai invitation pending here, of course, as always. Chai with halim. Tea with milk. All right. Of course. Ah, hot, hot, hot. <laughs> This is the famous Yemeni hospitality in action, even in the middle of the sea. Oh my gosh. And then we had a peek inside their freezer. Oh, is this tuna? Tuna? Tuna. We eventually said goodbye to our hosts and returned to the campsite with our hands full and our dinner guaranteed. There's actually a story behind this tuna that I should probably tell you about. We got this fish for free from the boat captain. See, when we arrived he had a cut on his hand and I happened to have some iodine nearby so I gave him a whole batch. And uh, as a thank you, he gave us this fish. And though we <laughs> insisted on paying, they insisted that it should be a gift, and that's what it was. It's a gesture of kindness in exchange for a gesture of kindness. Here, in the middle of nowhere, in one of the most remote places on Earth. The more I travel, the more I realize that places like this, experiences like this, meetings like this are so, so special. They're becoming more and more rare. After all, when do we ever get the opportunity to connect to the source of our food in such meaningful ways? I mean, when is the last time you made sushi from a fish that you'd just bought from a fisherman? I know for sure that I don't do it often enough. What have we got here, Rob? Sushi. Sushi. Sashimi from tuna. <laughs> Straight from the sea. Yep. <laughs> We've got a whole cooking setup here with a gas stove and a frying pan, so we're gonna fry that tuna and make some rice just to spice it up. This should be a really good dinner. Dinner is finally ready. We've got rice and freshly caught fish. Simple and delicious. And then darkness enveloped the island. There it is, there it is. Can you see it? There's our rat, the first one. Here it is. Mi gira bene il cazzo! Oh, there it is! Oh. Look at it! Whoa! We just had our very first rat sighting, Rob. Was it big? Uh, yeah, it was like a half kilo. Oh my god! <laughs> this is getting a little bit freaky because it's now dark and this is the time that the rats come out to play or hunt. I'm considering to sleep on the boat, which is out on the open sea. <laughs> Damn, Akahua. You have a strong light? Let's go. Come. Can you light me? Where are we yeah. going? They will come for sure. You think you think more will come? Yeah. That really? Is for sure Are we getting the tents? Yes. I'm going to the boat. We've just realized that this is a little bit more serious than we thought. We kind of didn't want to believe the legend, but it's true. There are many rats here. Many. So we're going to grab our tents from the boat because I don't think we can sleep outside tonight. Don't want to get eaten alive by a bunch of rats on a wild island where nobody knows where we are.
boat and the tents. That means we can actually sleep inside the tents tonight. Hopefully that gives us ample protection. Oh, enough protection <laughs> against the rat invasion. But as soon as I put up my tent, I realized that there weren't enough tents for everybody. We had packed too few. So I gave mine to our boat crew and decided to sleep outside. Not something to look forward to when you're on a rat-infested island. It's 11 o'clock and I've been woken up by a bunch of rats running over me. <laughs> had to move from the cave to the beach and I can hear them squeaking all over. So it's a little bit difficult to sleep. But I think I can just wrap myself up in this sheet and uh, catch a little bit of sleep. Let's see. That night, all around me, in the dark, I sensed the movement of tiny legs and heard peeping noises over the waves. I saw bright, reflecting eyes every time I switched on my flashlight. I shuddered and chased them away. I barely slept. Oh, it's just before 5 a.m. and finally it's getting light outside. Oh, this was a really unnerving night, I tell you. Seriously, I could hear the peeping and screeching of rats everywhere and I had to get up several times just to chase them off. The rocks here nearby, uh, just really n not a nice experience to be honest. But I'm still alive. I made it through the night. I survived. It's now dawn, so no more rats. And by the way, these were my weapons of choice, just in case any rats dared get too close to my sleeping pack. <laughs> All right, I'm back in the cave. Let's assess the damage. See? All these tiny little footprints. Yep, those are rats. Everywhere here. Everywhere. They were absolutely everywhere. See the sand on my bags? That wasn't there before. That is all because of rats crawling on my bags. We hid all of our food in this container, which is locked and sealed. But we did make one mistake. We left this big jar of olive oil and look, all of this has little rat paw tracks on it. And out here on the beach, of course, you can see rat traps going right up to my sleeping bag. <laughs> oh my God. Even just looking at this porridge, see? It's got bite marks here on the plastic on the lid. They tried their very best to get inside. Luckily, they didn't manage to. That means we still have breakfast for today. Perfect. Porridge with cinnamon and a very generous portion of Nutella. Honestly, guys, it's nights like this that make me realize that some places are perhaps better left undisturbed, uncamped, like Dasa, Dasa Island here, one of the most remote corners of the world. Sure, as a human you can come here during the day, but at night this little kingdom goes back to nature.